Okay, I'm going to give an overview of the historical investigation today, describing what it is, what are its parts, how it fits into the overall picture of the history of the Americas course, unlike the test grade, and what are the basic requirements for length and topic selection. So, as we can see, it's 25 points. It's worth 25 raw points, and it's got six different components that constitute those 25 points. The plan of investigation for three points, the summary of evidence for six, the evaluation of sources for five, the analysis for six, the conclusion for two, and the work cited for three. Adding up to 25. So these raw points then factor into the total score uh, that students get on their IB test. And you know, I've got different videos that go through the descriptions of exactly what all these sections are. So if there's any questions that a student has about, for example, the plan of investigation, they should watch the video about the plan of investigation where I go into great detail. Pretty much with all of these, I give a description about what the expectations for the individual section is. And in all of them, I show usually examples of both what a good sample looks like and a bad sample. So these really help give students all the details that they might have about questions on the specific sections. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that today. Instead, what I'm going to describe uh, or remind students about is that this is, as it says here, 20% of the total IB score for higher level history of the Americas. And this is an easy part. So what this means is that this is 20% of the total 100% that is the grade that a student will get. And this is the easiest part. It's the easiest part because you're doing it in class, because when you're doing it, you can ask your friends. When you're doing it, you can ask your teacher for help. And AST students American, uh, at the American School of Tegucigalpa have been trained for years about how to do this. Now, granted, when students have been doing rougher versions of this in 8th grade or ninth grade or 10th grade, it's not exactly like it is in the senior year, but usually it's pretty close. So by the time students get to 12th grade, they should be very, very comfortable doing it. They should be able to create a refined product that they can get a lot of points on. So that then when they go and sit down and take the three paper tests, they can have some latitude. They can have some flexibility. They can maybe make a small mistake and still get a decent grade on the test. That's how students need to view the historical investigation. They have to view it as easy points. They have to view it as something that they need to do well on. That they have to get a good grade on. We're really a four on this isn't enough. Students have to go to try and get a 5, a 6, or even a 7 on the historical investigation. Because what that will allow them to do is then give them room for mistakes on, on some of the paper tests. So students need to do well on this. A student who is doing poorly on the historical investigation is not going to receive a high predicted IB score. They won't. Because if they mess up on this 20%, which is relatively far easier than the remaining 80%, an instructor is not going to have any confidence in, their, in a student's ability to, to pass the class. Okay? Uh, it says also that there's a word requirement, uh, 1,500 to 2,000 words. These words can be spread out in really any of the sections. There's not requirements within the sections. Usually there's recommendations or guidelines that you might have heard teachers give in the past. For example, usually the conclusion, because it's only worth two points, is a shorter section. It's about 200 words. Plan of investigation, three points, usually that's also a shorter section, 200, maximum 300 words. And usually the majority of the words go in the sections that are, of course, worth the most points. So the summary of evidence, the analysis, and the evaluation of sources, that's where most of those words are going to be. If you're curious about, you know, do I have too many words in this section, or do I have not enough, of course you can, you can ask your teacher and they can give you some, some of those estimates. And the last thing I've got on here is that the topic that is selected for the history internal assessment for this historical investigation must be at least 10 years old as of the time of submission. So in the American School of Tegucigalpa, documents are submitted for April 20th. So what that means is that the topic of study must be at least 10 years older from that date, April 20th, of the year of submission. So, for example, here in Honduras, a topic that's very interesting to uh, many students is the coup d'etat of Mel Zelaya, but as that happened in 2009, you know, that would not be a topic that students could write on 
until 2019. So that's kind of off limits. It's got to be at least 10 years old. Uh, otherwise, the, the argument is that it's not really history because it's so recent. It's uh, almost more of like a political science or a current affair. It doesn't really fall into the domain of history. So that's basically what it is. And remember, of course, that there are videos on the other individual sections so that, you know, if you want to know what they are, you can watch those videos. I definitely recommend it. I mean, that's kind of why all these videos are laid out this way. It's like a big, nice package. You want to open it up and see what's inside. So I think that sums it up.